uh, we'll, we'll like to start with the Hall effect uh, and gradually want to go into quantum Hall effect. So, how is this uh, previous discussion related to this discussion? We are going to talk about conductivity either in Hall effect or uh, you know in the longitudinal uh, conductivity that one gets that is uh, as you pass current through a material in the direction of passing current uh, there are there is a resistivity or a conductivity that develops and if you want to measure it uh, the this is the way to measure it which is what we have uh, learned in the last uh, discussion that we had ok. Now, um, let us uh, sort of talk about the discovery of uh, Hall effect to begin with ok. And uh, let us start with actually quantum Hall effect. So, uh, we will we'll come to classical Hall effect that you all are familiar with in just uh, some time. So, this is known very precisely you know uh, I mean the discovery of this thing occurred uh, in the night of uh, 4th and 5th. February 1980 ok. And uh, if you want to be precise about this, uh, this happened at about 2 am in the morning The name of the discoverer is uh, K V Kletzing, Klaus von Kletzing and he discovered it and uh, in his notes on that night, uh, he actually said something very, very interesting. He said that um, he actually gave the resistance uh, the which is a you know the benchmark of resistance uh, and uh, from this experiment which is done on particular type of uh, system semiconductors uh, two dimensional semiconductor uh, semiconducting systems where uh, the electron gases are mobile only in uh, on a plane and from there he actually uh, did the Hall effect experiment. Uh, this happened in uh, Grenoble uh, France and it happened um, in, in a lab which has facilities of large magnetic fields and by large magnetic fields uh, what we mean is about maybe 10 tesla uh, or even more uh, 5 to uh, 15 tesla say for example ok. And uh, how did he discover quantum Hall effect? Uh, the background story is that he has been working closely with uh, two gentlemen called uh, Dorda, Dorda and Pepper ok, who were uh, engineers and uh, who supplied samples to Klaus von Kletzing and uh, the samples uh, to study the mobility of silicon MOSFETs ok. Uh, so, th there is a semiconductor industry which was growing at that time and um, it is uh, it was quite important to actually get very high uh, mobility samples. So, they were trying to increase the mobility of the samples of the silicon MOSFETs and that is how it uh, got uh, sort of you know discovered. These are fed devices, uh, the field effect transistor devices which were um, uh, quite important to study in those days and still now. So, they supplied the samples and uh, Klitzing did the experiment and uh, Klitzing of course, uh, won a Nobel prize uh, for this discovery. And uh, incidentally, I will tell you about the uh, details of the discovery and that we will discuss throughout this course. This incidentally this discovery occurred about just about 100 years later than Edwin Hall uh, who discovered Hall effect. The Hall effect that you all are familiar with the classical Hall effect in 1879. So, 1879 and 1980 uh, were just about 101 years apart and uh, that is where the interesting thing came. So, what is the di uh, difference between classical Hall effect and quantum Hall effect uh, that we are going to study? 
the classical Hall effect is at uh, room temperature and uh, it is at very low magnetic field is less than 1 tesla or even less than 0.5 tesla that we do in our lab. I will discuss that experiment uh, that you one does in the undergraduate labs of, uh, uh, of any of this institution or any of the you know uh, teaching uh, colleges or uh, other institutes that one has. And um, it was found that uh, uh, this experiment by Edwin Hall uh, very accurately measures uh, the type of semiconductors from the sign of what, what we call as a Hall uh, coefficients and it also uh, gives a, a nice order of estimate for the density of the carriers. So, the Hall resistivity, I will just give you an example what Hall resistivity is or the Hall resistivity which is um, you know uh, defined by something like um, so the Hall resistivity let us call it as R just R which is equal to Hall voltage uh, divided by the longitudinal current. And in fact, a more uh, familiar quantity is known as Rh. This is uh, found to be uh, like B over NQ, where B is the magnetic field and N is the density of the carriers and Q is the charge of the carriers, which uh, of course, we know that they are electrons. And uh, there is a quantity which is more um, familiarly used which is called as a Hall coefficients which is R over B which is equal to 1 over N Q because we do not know whether uh, the carriers are holes or electrons that is why we want to leave it as Q. So, this is uh, one of the main findings is that the Hall resistivity is proportional to B which means that the Hall resistivity will grow linearly with B like this. Okay? And, uh, this slope is nothing but it is equal to 1 over n q. Now, this slope whether it is a positive slope or you have a plot which goes like this that will tell you that uh, the slope is uh, has a positive sign or a negative sign and this sign will decide that what kind of carriers you have and the overall magnitude of the slope will tell you that uh, the what is n that is the density of the carriers in that particular uh, material or the semiconductor. Okay? So, this was uh, the Hall experiment or Hall effect is all about. So, let me try to make you give a feel that what actually is done in the lab. So, this is a classical Hall effect setup. Okay. And uh, let me make the drawing a little big and clear such that uh, you are Okay, so this is say a Hall sample. Uh, this is the uh, let's let's call this as width as W. Now this is uh, drawn not in scale. These samples are usually very thin samples, almost flat, uh, close to two dimension. But I'm showing it with a width which is W. And uh, let's say the uh, this uh, breadth uh, of the sample is equal to D. And um, uh, you send a current which is J x here and let me uh, show the axis to be this is x, this is y and this is z axis. Okay? So, so there is a magnetic field that is uh, applied in this direction because this is the z axis and there is a current that uh, is uh, sent in this direction that is the x direction, see the x direction in the figure. And now, you want to measure the voltage in the y direction and that is called as a Hall voltage. Okay? So, this is where you measure the voltage 
by maybe a voltmeter or a multimeter and so on. Okay. So, this is the setup that you have typical setup that you have in the labs that you. So, these uh, the top and the bottom uh, sort of uh, planes are connected to a voltage measuring device and this is. Um, so, you have charges here. So, voltage measuring device which is uh, denoted by VH which measures the hall voltage. Okay. So, what happens is that, uh, so there are these, uh, uh, these charges which uh, experience low range force and the low range force these charges are moving because you are talking about uh, almost like a free electron system. So, uh, the force is given by uh, Q V cross B. Uh, now, your V is they are moving along the x direction and then B is in the z direction. So, they are of course, going to uh, get deflected in the y direction which is a vertical direction here. Okay. And I um, will uh, sort of do a simple analysis now and then probably do a more refined analysis later. This is I am just talking about a lab how a lab undergraduate lab would uh, look at this thing. All right. So, uh, at equilibrium, so what will happen is that all the charges will start migrating either in the plus uh, y direction or minus y direction depending on their sign and then you have uh, these uh, once the equilibrium is established, the motion of the charges will stop after that. Okay. So, what it means is that uh, you have, so this is a, uh, there is a Q V cross B that is a low range force, but there is also an electrical, uh, so this is due to the uh, magnetic field, this is due to an electric field there is also a force which is proportional to or in the direction of the electric field. So, the total force on this is equal to F B plus F E, uh, the electric field is because you are passing a current. So, you are there is a battery that is connected which I have not shown, uh, but that is there and that is why you have an electric force there. So, this is equal to Q into E plus V cross B and this at equilibrium is equal to 0. Okay. So, understand that uh, the charges cannot move due to these two uh, fields indefinitely. Okay. They would the eventually they would all uh, all the charges that are present in the system will either settle at the top plane or the bottom plane uh, once you know the, the apparatus is switched on for quite some time when the equilibrium will be established. Okay. V denotes of course, the, uh, the drift velocity of the carriers and so on and then because of this uh, there is a E y that is going to be created because if you are measuring a hall voltage there must be a uh, electric field due to the hall voltage which uh, must be created which is equal to a V B z which is equal to uh, J x which is equal to V. Uh, let me write it with a capital J. So, this is equal to J x by uh, N q and uh, B is only in the z direction. So, I do not have to write a B z. Uh, so, this is J x by N q and then uh, B z. So, what you do is that here N is the charge density. All right. So, uh, the ratio this E y divided by a J x B this called as a Hall coefficient. And let us write it as uh, with R h, h capital H standing for Hall. Okay. And uh, what we have shown is that this R h is equal to, uh, so this is E y divided by J x into B, this is equal to a V h uh, d divided by I into B, where we have written the J x to be the linear density of current which is equal to I over d because J x was in the denominator. So, this is equal to I over d, d is the sort of width of this current, uh, I mean this sample that you see here. Okay. So, uh, from this equation, so this is equal to 1 over n q which is what I have said. From this is it is very clear that uh, this uh, depends on the type of carrier density 
and also the density the actual n which is the density of the carriers ok. So, this is the experimental setup and so on. So, you uh, how you actually uh, apply the magnetic field that is the question ok. And what you do is that you put the sample in presence or, or in between uh, the pole pieces of an electromagnet such that that direction because if you put something in between an electromagnet the magnetic field is going to penetrate that sample and that becomes your z direction which is shown here in this particular direction towards semi ok. And uh, then you sort of pass a current in a in a one of the other two directions call that as a x direction and measure the voltage in the third direction let us call that as a y direction. So, once you do that and uh, these uh, electromagnets uh, as we have in the labs in almost all labs that are uh, having these uh, experiments at the undergraduate or even at the MSc level uh, the a magnetic field is not large it is about 0 0.3 or 0 0.4 tesla uh, anything between 0 0.2 to 0 0.4 tesla and so on. So, this uh, magnetic field is applied so that the electrons um, uh, they drift. Uh, along the y direction and you measure the voltage ok. So, uh, from the direction of the current and the magnetic field uh, one can estimate the direction and accumulation of the uh, charge carriers uh, in this y direction ok. And uh, connect one of the voltage probes uh, that is Hall voltage probes which is shown here ok. So, that is a Hall voltage probe and then such that you actually by, by connecting say a voltmeter and um, uh, so, connect the other voltage probe to the other side of the voltmeter or maybe the ammeter and um, leave this connection the way that it is. Now, you uh, record in this experiment you record the voltages record four sets of readings. Okay. And uh, these readings are uh, you measure the voltage by this voltage probe or uh, these uh, Hall voltage probe which is either a millivolt meter or a or an ammeter and so on. So, you you measure it for a given magnetic field and uh, current ok. Uh, let us call this as V1 uh, ok. So, let us call this uh, B i that is uh, B applied in a particular direction which is say the plus z direction and uh, i which is which is along the plus x direction let us call that as v1. Now, you uh, change the direction of current ok by changing the pole pieces of the battery that is driving the current let us call that as v2. You now you calculate uh, a minus b and i that is you change the in the electromagnet you uh, reverse the pole pieces and calculate which is known as V3 and then finally, you have a minus B minus I which let us call it as a V4 ok. So, this V3 is uh, for the reverse field and uh, V4 is a reverse field and the current and uh, this is the uh, reverse current and so on ok. So, now using these uh, data that you have in the lab uh, your VH in terms of this V1, V2 etcetera can be written as V1 minus V2 minus V3 minus uh, plus V4 and so on ok and divided by V1 minus V2 minus V3 uh, and plus V4 and um, so this is uh, the expression for the Hall voltage and you note down the Hall voltage and um, once you get the Hall voltage you can put it into the formula that had been discussed that once you get this Hall voltage you know the current or and you know the dimensions of the system which is d and i uh, and you also know the magnetic field. So, you can get R h which is nothing but uh, 1 over n q ok. And uh, you repeat the measurements with uh, whatever values of magnetic field and current that are available to you. And uh, usually the width of the sample that is d is uh, of the order of is about uh, maybe around 5 mm um, and w is around w is very small this is around 0.5 mm 
ok. So, this is the uh, like the or the length of the sample and the width of the sample which is the, the thickness of the sample so to say is a 0.5 mm which is um, you know uh, these are samples that are available and uh, now you can uh, draw suitable graphs and uh, as a function of B uh, and VH and then you can actually calculate uh, from the slope you know what are the, the sign of the charge carriers that is whether they are electrons or uh, whether they are holes. And uh, the fact remains at the end that your R H uh, or R is proportional to B. So, the R versus B is a straight line is what I mean ok. Now, when von Klitzing did this experiment, he found something very uh, unusual and this unusual things gave rise to a lot of interesting phenomena. He found that the whole uh, resistivity we will write it as R or we will write it as rho, it has a structure like this. Uh, there is a very rough drawing, but and and so on and then uh, you know this there is a bit of. Uh, so, this is as a function of B and the experiment is done at, I will show you better pictures of this, but right now it is just a schematic drawing and uh, why did I uh, not show this uh, kind of step like structure, because this is the region where the classical fall effect is uh, the experiment is done at very small b where it is almost like a straight line ok, which I uh, did not show of course, uh, showed it with a freehand drawing which is uh, and uh, just to show that there is no plateau structure there. So, this plateaus actually threw a lot of surprise and uh, why should there be plateaus and what happens which means that uh, the whole resistivity does not increase. Uh, in this region as you increase the magnetic field. You have to understand that why should Hall uh, the resistance uh, would increase with the magnetic field ok. A very simple sort of calculation would uh, show you this that uh, you know when you uh, change the magnetic field you actually change the carrier density and how you change the carrier density? You change it because your this is like 0 to mu. So, this is your carrier density is equal to some uh, f of E, uh, g of E and d of E ok. So, this E is the energy of the electrons in presence of a magnetic field ok. We do not know as yet what that is, but this is a general formula this is for the density uh, of electrons or is the total number of electrons ok. I mean you can uh, you can write this as total number of electrons because you have integrated the density of states. So, either I write n and then somehow if I divide it by v that is uh, will become the density of uh, carriers. So, in that case it becomes n. Now, uh, this is some function of E which sort of you know this uh, includes a magnetic field. So, this is the Fermi distribution function. To remind you what is the Fermi distribution function? The distribution function is exponential beta epsilon minus mu uh, plus 1 and uh, so this uh, is the bare electron where electronic energy levels are written as h cross square k square over 2 m uh, and uh, mu denotes the chemical potential. Here this may, mu is the chemical potential and this is the density of states ok. So, uh, because uh, every quantity physical quantity that you would uh, like to determine depends on the density of states that how many states are there that tells you what the properties will be and how the properties are different in different dimensions ok. And because this density of states have different behavior with energy and we are really looking for energies close to the Fermi energy for most of our conductance uh, behavior ok. So, this tells you that as you sweep B or as you increase B. Uh, we told that uh, you put things inside an electromagnet and take reading for various B's, uh, which means that uh, you make the current that is flowing in the electromagnet to be larger and larger, so that you can actually sweep over a range of magnetic field. There it was uh, very small, you start from 0 magnetic field and go up to maybe 0 0.4 uh, Tesla, 
whereas here you go up to maybe 10 tesla or 15 tesla which is a large magnetic field and um, these uh, distribution function will be uh, proportional to not really proportional but it will sort of scale as you change the magnetic field because of the reason that uh, this quantity the fermi distribution function will be a function of b because the energy it will enter through the energy i wrote it separately but doesn't mean that we are talking about uh, the, these two will scale independently they will depend on each other and this will increase as you sweep B, as you make B to be larger. Uh, when that happens, uh, then the conductivity will be different, okay? It will change. Just like in the classical Hall effect, we saw that uh, as you change B, uh, this uh, resistivity or the Hall, I mean the Hall resistance, so to say, uh, that scales with uh, the magnetic field. Here also you should do that. But uh, why is this region, this plateau region coming? And because of this plateau region, it is these are called plateaus. And because of this plateau region, uh, the name had come that it is a quantized Hall effect or a quantum Hall effect. Because here uh, the resistivity is not just a monotonic function, linear function of B, but it uh, shows plateaus and these plateaus are interesting. Now, what Klitzing found out on the day of his discovery in which he actually wrote some nice notes, they are uh, sort of illegible uh, because they have been you know used uh, many times, but he had found out that these uh, resistivities are quantized in h over e square, which means this has a value h over e square. I am just giving you an example, this is h over 2 e square, this is h over 3 e square and so on. Okay. So, these are happening, these uh, now these are resistivity, so they have, so this is, this value is h over 3 e square, this value is h over 2 is e square and this value is h over e square and so on and so forth. Okay. And he found that this has a value which is, it is 25.813 uh, kilo ohms. Okay. And uh, this is uh, a resistance which is now taken as a unit of resistance. Now, you see that H is a Planck's constant, okay? E is the electronic charge and these two put together define a unit of resistance. These are quantum mechanical quantities like H sets the scale of energy. I mean, if you remember that uh, E equal to H nu or H cross omega uh, as appeared in Planck's theory of radiation. Uh, so, this is the quantized energy of the photons. Uh, with the H having a value which is 6.63 into 10 to the power minus 34 joule second. And um, uh, this H was initially introduced by uh, Bohr's theory of uh, atoms where the electrons uh, have angular momenta which are quantized in unit of uh, H uh, such that uh, when they move around in the stationary orbits, they do not uh, emit uh, uh, electromagnetic radiation and uh, these are called as the stationary orbits. Okay. And um, uh, E is the electronic charge which has a value 1.6 into 10 to the power minus 19 coulomb. Thus, all these uh, microscopic quantities uh, H and E, uh, they put together define uh, the unit of resistance which is H over E square, uh, which is a measurable quantity and uh, it comes out in the Hall experiment. Okay. And um, now this is known as uh, metrology. What it means is that uh, uh, metrology is uh, uh, the scientific study of measurement uh, which uh, establishes a common understanding of units in the context of this uh, modern uh, manufacturing industry. Uh, metrology also refers to the calibration of machines that are used in the production process. And uh, for example, uh, the defining the length of an object, uh, one uses the laser interferometry. So, here uh, we define the unit of resistance or we fix resistance uh, by this experiment. And this experiment, think of this, it is done in the lab. Okay? Of course, we are talking about uh, low temperature and large magnetic field, but they are still accessible. Low temperature is, uh, we know that uh, liquid 
nitrogen temperature or liquid helium temperature if you want to go to still lower values like liquid helium temperature is about uh, 4.2 Kelvin and liquid nitrogen is about 77 Kelvin. These are low, low enough temperatures for a specific kind of experiments. I mean you probably need to go to uh, farther lower temperatures to see uh, some other effects. Uh, let us not go into that, but here uh, it is an experiment that is done with, uh, with samples which are uh, not perfectly clean which we will see. In, in the coming uh, discussions, uh, but they still are able to fix the value of the resistance. This is the uh, one of the main triumphs of the quantum Hall effect which uh, was missing in the classical version of the Hall effect which could only give you for a given sample which could give you the sign of the carriers that is I, whether they are electrons or holes or what is the carrier density th for that particular sample which could be anything between 10 to the power 16 to 10 to the power 19, but it does not say anything uh, which is a fundamental quantity. Now this tells you about a fundamental quantity. Uh, if you see that it has the uh, really the uh, resistance, the unit of resistance H over E square uh, and uh, will also you know um, in uh, almost a similar manner we will talk about. Uh, conductivity which has a scale which is inverse of that. So, this is called as conductivity and conductivity is um, either written in ohm inverse or it is written as mu MHO. Uh, so, this omega is called ohm and this is called as uh, mu just the opposite uh, ok. So, that is called as a conductance. So, I hope just to put things in perspective in uh, half a minute, uh, we have uh, done uh, a thorough calculation of uh, conductivity in uh, nanostructures or mesostructures, mesoscopic quantities rather uh, systems, the mesoscopic scales of those quantities. And um, then uh, we uh, came to talk about Hall effect which is uh, not uh, we are not interested in calculating the longitudinal resistance which of course, we also would be you know discussing longitudinal resistance. Uh, but here we are more interested in talking about the transverse resistance that is uh, uh, perpendicular to the direction uh, where you send the current you, uh, you measure the voltage in a direction which is perpendicular to that that is called as a Hall voltage. So, uh, the, uh, the, the system or rather the, the formalism does not change. Uh, the system also remains the same excepting that uh, we are talking about a different resistance and a different resistivity of the material, property of the material and the property very convincingly shows us the resistivity to be uh, a universal constant and uh, 25.813 kilo ohm corresponds to the value h over e square which are known to be purely quantum mechanical quantities. Mm -hmm.